welcome. You are listening to another episode of the Business of Aesthetics podcast series brought to you by our gold sponsors, MRP, Laser Optech, and Equa Marketing. We also want to thank our silver sponsors, Lendia Law, Eilis Works, and Pronox. If you would like to network and share your experience with our podcast guests and other aesthetic industry professionals, join our Facebook or LinkedIn communities by searching for Business of Aesthetics. Today, we're going to be speaking with one of the finest experts in aesthetics. Here's an opportunity for you. Learn five marketing steps to grow profits in your aesthetic practice and elevate patient attraction and retention. Join us on September 13, 2023, 8 p.m. Eastern Time or 5 p.m. Pacific Time for an exclusive webinar by Aesthetics Institute and Business of Aesthetics Community. Don't miss out. Register now for game-changing strategies. Check out www.businessofaesthetics.org homepage for more details. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Business of Aesthetics. I'm thrilled today to be able to speak with uh, Dana Zeitler, a physician assistant. Dana has been in practice doing aesthetics for many years, uh, owns a, a, a six-year location in Naples, Florida, Deluxe Med Spa. Uh, I, we were just talking about the area a little bit, but uh, Dana, you've actually, you've been in aesthetics longer than that, but this is your, your baby was the six years ago opening this Deluxe Med Spa yourself. Yes, that's correct. So I, um, I've i been a PA for actually 30 years, if you can believe it. I graduated from George Washington University in 1993, um, and I worked in surgery and critical care for about six years. And then I took some time off to raise my children. I have three boys um, who are now in their 20s and up. And I went back to work in 2009 and started with lasers, with a national laser chain, and soon um, wanted to do more than just uh, laser hair removal. So I got into injectables and really um, worked at several different spas, self-trained, did as many courses as I could back then. Palette, have you heard of Palette? Um, no. They're a they're class. Um, they, they, they were one of the original hands-on classes for injectables. So I took as many classes as I could. And my mentors from those classes are, you know, John Feza, uh, Charles Boyd, Keith Marcus. They're some of the larger names in the industry for trainers. And I'm still grateful for those trainings, but that got me started. And I worked for part-time for multiple places and then finally opened in 2017 with our own space. I was blessed to open with my husband. He's a physician. Yeah. Yeah, your husband is a physician as well. So that's awesome. What a, what really, what a blessing. Yeah, I'm happy to hear you talk about uh, mentorship because you, you've really focused a lot of your career on teaching. I know you're a sought after speaker and, and trainer. Uh, and, but that's because you've really given of yourself and, and to this idea of education I think there's certain people have that all boats rise with the tide mentality and you're you're one of those Absolutely. people. Absolutely. I'm guessing you've had some really great mentors because usually people that have those great mentors are the best mentors. Absolutely. So I um I was kind of inspired to start training. I went to a um class. I don't know if you've heard of Arthur Swift. He's a, he's a big injector name and he d- taught a class in 2019 with um, Dr. Kodafana, who's a big uh, anatomist and they introduced ultrasound to aesthetics. So I was really interested in learning this ultrasound, being able to see beneath the skin. And I signed up for Dr. Weiner, Steve Weiner's very first ultrasound course in 2020 so I, we were still wearing masks back then, and I had just purchased a Clarius. And he said, once you get rolling with it, and if I have some larger classes, I would love to have you come and help me teach. And so that's that's kind of how I got on the teaching journey. And I'm grateful to Dr. Weiner for, for really being a mentor with uh, ultrasound. 
And uh, then I got hired by Galderma to be a game trainer. And I've done some speaking and training with Cyton lasers because I'm, I'm a big laser kind of geek as well. Cause that was my, that's how I got started in aesthetics was with lasers. That's and you're awesome. a laser person too, right? A uh, little bit. You have a little laser, a little bit of laser love too, don't you? Oh yeah, definitely a love of lasers. 20, 23 years in laser sales and the industry, energy devices and uh, love all that stuff. And Dr. Weiner has contributed so much to our community specifically. Uh, I remember working with him with uh, Lutronic RF micro needling. He was the first one to start using that uh, large needle for PRP in, injection like scalp and other injections that I don't know if you've seen those uh, devices that have seven or eight different needles on them, but um, gosh, he's just so much. To, to, I think yeah, he he is, of, he's he's amazing. Stuff. He he has a brilliant mind, and I have learned so much from him. And I'm blessed that you know really to have him as a, as a mentor, um, and really getting getting me into um, teaching and serving others and. I think that you become a better injector by learning how to teach and breaking down the steps. So you have to know your stuff to, to be able to train others. So I'm, I've, I kind of caught in the bug of just really want to elevate the whole industry because um, the better, the better everyone is, the safer we all will be, the less complications we'll see will be. I did uh, start a local private Facebook group for uh, local uh, injectors in our area, just so that we can have a little collaboration. If one of us has an issue, we can call on the other person and, you know, maybe, you know, one person has some Highland X that the other person doesn't, or, and we can help each other out. And I really um, believe in that collaborative um, relationship with other providers. Yeah. And I, the willingness to, you know, the, 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 just a parallel with my buddies, you know, the, the, the ones that send out the best jokes are the ones that receive the best jokes too. So yeah. there's something to be said for sharing that information. People want to share back with you as well. And I do, I see, you know, there's a reason that you and Dr. Weiner and all these other key opinion leaders go to these meetings and learn from each other and look at each other in, amazement and that's how we do perpetuate our community so i appreciate you being a part of it i know you're part of our facebook uh, group on business of aesthetics as well and listen to other uh, podcasts and support our our group so we um we need it we we need more like you thank you no much. i i love it i think it's super fun and i I get inspired and kind of you know jazzed up whenever i go to a meeting and get to talk to other people about about what I'm passionate about, which is helping other people. And that's sort of what we get to do every day is make people happy most of the time. <laughs> right. Almost, so, oh, almost all the time. So I want to jump in with you because there, I don't want to take, uh, I can talk to you all day, but there's so many subjects that you're really an expert yeah. on. And I think benefit our community and focused around uh, the patient experience, starting you know with the consultation. So I'm going to come back to but, and going through, how do you, you know, how do I look at a patient and address a patient? How do I balance that with both laser and injectable in my office and looking at the revenue aspects of those types of things? And then six years ago and, and the ongoing struggle of building a team and keeping a, a, a team while, um, you know, being special in your community or standing out so 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 many subjects well let, let's start with consultation uh okay a lot of a lot of people really struggle with the consultation and you'll hear f physicians especially say this but i think a lot of people say i don't like selling i'm not good at sales i don't like selling them i don't like talking about the money or um i'm not good at packaging things or it always feels like it costs too much money. How do you how do you help someone through? What's the proper way to do an aesthetic consultation? Well, I don't know if there's a proper way, but I'll tell you what works for me. So 
Um, I really treat it like a longstanding relationship. I almost treat it like dating. So, you know, the first time a patient comes to me, um, obviously I want them to have an amazing experience at my office. I want my front to, you know, treat them like they are the center of the universe, um, offer them water. We have kind bars in our lobby. We do all of those things. Uh, so, but generally I will sit down with them and I like to sit down with them not in the exam chair. So I like them to be ideally eye to eye with me so that I can watch um, their facial expressions and really examine um, them talking to me. And I'll just start with, you know, how can I serve you? You know, how, how can I help you? What are you here for today? Because there's something that made them make the phone call to make that appointment with you. So how, how can you help them, you know, however you want to put it, but they're there. And then I listen to what they're saying. And you really have to put on um, your listening ears to, because sometimes what they're telling you they want is not necessarily what they really want. Because sometimes I'll, you know, I'll have a patient, we have an older population here. So sometimes they'll come in and they'll, you know, pull their hands back on their face and they'll lift, try to lift the whole face. And they'll say, I want some Botox. And I know that Botox is not going to serve them. So I'm super honest with the patient. That's one of our core values is honesty. So I will say to them, listen, what you're doing with your hands, lifting up, you know, um, over two inches of skin from the sides of your face, it, Botox is not going to serve you. And I'll immediately say, I have a, a wonderful plastic surgeons in our area that I can refer you to. And I'm super honest with them. And I think that they really appreciate that honesty, that I'm not going to take their money if what I have to offer is not going to serve them. But generally, that's my first question. And I think sitting eye to eye, and really, they're not in the chair, I'm not going to just start going after them with needles, I want to get to know them, I'm playing the long game, and starting small, you know, I, I usually do very little amount the first time I meet someone, because I'm getting to know them, I want to know what um, what kind of, you know, some people, they think Botox is a big deal, or they think a syringe filler is a big deal. And I want to wait until that two week mark when they come back for their follow up. And then we will kind of go on to other things. Um, I do have a consultation sheet that is a step by step that I go over their aesthetics history and their any plastic surgery history. And it's it's more in depth that I ask all those questions. But I know some people when they do a consultation, they go through like you know, offering 19 different things to the patient on their very first visit. And I really, um, I will get into that if the patient is asking me, but I really, that first visit, I want to address the main concern that they had that brought them in that day. That's what I want to focus on. In the consultation itself. So you're, you're not allowing yourself to get distracted with all the peripheral and kind of I think we all love to share everything about our med spa that we have to offer patients but I think what I hear you saying is you're staying focused in the consult on their primary concern and not like you you will drift off if they continue to push you in that direction but otherwise you're, yeah. you're staying on the one thing and then what you just depend on that you're going to have a good experience and get them back for condition number two or or my well, I see everybody back. Well, no, but pretty much it depends what they're there for. You know, if they're there for laser, you know, I'm going to focus on laser services. I'm going to give them the laser options. So I get a lot of referrals for I, I'm for laser service, you know, laser stuff in my in my area. So I go through the options. We have BBL, we have Halo, we have Moxie, depending on downtime. And I go, I have a um, a book and an iPad that has photographs of the before and after process and, and the healing, I'm sorry, the healing process and before and after pictures. And I kind of say, okay, let's look at what you're trying to achieve or what will make you happy. Let's figure out realistic expectations of how many treatments it will take to get you from point A to point B. And, you know, it, depending on what they're asking me for, because sometimes they'll sit down and they'll say, you know, I hate everything, but um, and I'm like, okay, well, let's focus. What's what's the thing that you really want me because to focus on? And generally, you know, for injectables, usually it's glabella, glabella, 
and lip lines. That's a very common, um, if, and I'll, that's where I'll start because I probably don't have, usually I have about an hour for the consultation anyway. So I'm not going to be able to address everything under the sun. But if they say, oh, my brown spots bother me, I'll say, okay, let's, I'm going to give you some information. Then, you know, we have BBL, we have lots of lasers. I'm going to give you some information about it. And when you come back for that two week follow up, we're going to talk about it. But um, I like to play the long game. Um, do, and do I can follow up because you're treating glabella or lip line. Yeah, typ typically. And even with even with fillers, I just like to see them back at two weeks generally just because they're new to my practice. Um, I I you know, I play the long game with them of this is going to be a long term relationship. I do not want to see you once and then I never see you again. I hopefully will be working with you towards your your anti-aging goals for the next 5, 10, 15 years. And I've had patients now that have followed me around for spa, from spa to spa for 10 or 15 years. So, um, you know, do you, that's do, do, you, do you book really long consult appointments and leave yourself enough time to do filler purposely? I do. Or do you, or do you, are you qualifying these patients before? Like you think that they're going to want filler or you just kind of know like age, the age of your normal population there, the people that are coming to see in Naples. I mean, are you guessing on the demographic? Um, no, um, my front desk um, or, you know, my on even online scheduling, it will give the patient options of what they're most interested in. So, you know, my front desk is, is if somebody calls on the phone, they're very adept at, you know, what are you want to talk? It's because if it's, I hate, if it's a younger person that is really just interested in Botox or, you know, that would be a shorter appointment. But if somebody that wants to talk about laser, we do um, half an hour to of consult only talking, or if they think that they're going to want a treatment that day, it will be an hour if it's BBL, if it's Moxie or Halo or anything that's a little bit um, where they're going to need to numb. Uh, we have just the half hour consult and then schedule that appointment out depending on if they're a, an ideal candidate. Um, but for, for Botox and filler, generally it's a, it's an hour um, consultation appointment. Okay. And you're, just, you're, you're confident that they're going to go ahead and do it that day. And if not, I guess you have a free 30 minutes to catch up on God knows what. <laughs> well, as you can see from chatting with me just for a few minutes, I can talk for a while. So generally I can talk to people for, for about, you know, a half an hour consultation. And then if they don't want to do a treatment that day, which is, is rare that they don't want to do just a little bit, even if it's just their toxin, but, uh, but time, by the time you take pictures and wash their face and, you know, go through uh, expectations and, um, depending on if they've done it before, there are people that come in and, you know, this is their 19th time having filler. And so they kind of know what to expect, but I'm talking the people that you have to explain things to it, it takes, you know, it's, it's time consuming for sure. Do you use photography before the consultation or just before the treatment? So I like to use con um, photography as part of my consultation, ideally. So if I'm running behind, my medical assistants will get photos ahead of time because they know I'm going to want to see them anyway. But it, in an ideal world, I would sit down with my patient or sit down with the patient. I would really talk to them and get to know them first before I take pictures. And then I'll send them off to take pictures or I'll take them myself with the medical assistant and I'll maybe go do a quick Botox follow-up or something like that while they're getting their photos done. And then I'll come back and I really like to review the photos with the um, patient and look at them together because I think you kind of get this perspective when you're looking at the photographs where sometimes they'll notice things that they didn't notice um, in the mirror. So I really like looking at those pictures together. A uh, big part of that is the first photo that I look at is usually the one of them smiling. Um, and I have a very step-by-step, um, -step, you know, facial, uh, I have the, the medical assistants take lots of facial expressions from the exact same angles every time. But I like to look at the one smiling and I like to compliment the patient. So, you know, usually they have beautiful 
something beautiful about the patient, whether it's, you know, their eyes or their smile, but, you know, I don't, I want them to leave feeling good about themselves. And I don't want to, you know, rip them apart and make them feel self-conscious. So generally I love looking at that smiling one first and give them a big compliment because I think everyone is beautiful. I can find something beautiful about everybody. That's really nice. It's a nice tip. I mean, it's a nice way to do that. When you uh, are looking, so you're setting them up for uh, the photography and are you still focused on that one primary indication at this point? I, I am, but sometimes other things will come up when we're looking at those photographs together and it can they're, sometimes they're, be- They're leading that though. Yes, I let them lead that, but I, I have my um, MA take photographs of all, I, I don't know, it's, it's about seven facial expressions. So, you know, frowning, raising their brow, smiling, making a sad face for DAO, um, making a crybaby face for Mentalis and um, making, uh, showing me their lower teeth for their neck bands. So, you know, all of a sudden they will notice themselves making these faces and they'll be like, oh my God, you know, I didn't realize I did that with my chin. And I said, well, you know, if you ever want to, we could address um, some of that chin dimpling with a little bit of Botox. So, or, you know, they'll, they'll notice some of these things and I will give them solutions to the problem. Or I said, next time, you know, if you'd like to, you know, we can, we can work on the lip lines with a little bit of Botox or a little bit of filler possibly because the group, but just taking those pictures brings up the conversation. And if you don't take the pictures, sometimes you don't have the conversation. I love that. And and you have that photo documentation too, where, you know, we've all had puppies and you, you see them grow every day and you don't think much of it. It's your friend that comes over a month later and it's like, Oh my gosh, your puppy's huge. Right. Cause you don't know when you're looking at yourself every day, you don't see the same changes. Meanwhile, you've done two IPLs. Someone else is going to come back and say, Oh my gosh, your, your, your skin looks so good. Yeah. And sometimes we'll change, you know, even by the time they come back in the chair and I do the injectables and then they'll say, oh yeah, you know, maybe I would like to try my chin. Well, if I didn't take the picture of them making that strong facial expression, then I wouldn't have, you know, the before picture. So I I really just try to get them all. Um, I don't, I only do Vizia on the first visit during that consult. We have a Vizia analysis. If um, they are thinking about laser. So I, I generally reserve Vizia for the follow-up because it almost is too much information all at the same time. But if they're considering laser, I like to go ahead and get Vizia as well. And I um, I have the girls wash their face before photographs. So, mm. um, you know, usually when we're washing the face, we're going to talk about skincare products and are you using a vitamin C? Are you using a retinol? So all of these things will come up, but in a very natural way. Yeah, I love it. I love it. You, on the money side of things, on the injectable kind of philosophy, are you charging per area, per unit, per is it a flat rate for time? How, how do you how do you manage the so, dollars? And then are you the one talking about the dollar? Are you the one that just figured this plan out? Are you also the one talking about the dollar? I do sometimes give them a range. They We are very transparent with our pricing from um, our website of a range of cost for, you know, kind of upper face starting at about $600, um, full face and neck starting at about, you know, $1,000 to $1,500 for toxin. I do 90% of my patients with full face toxin. So taking all of those photo, photos of the full face um, has been in my, you know, has been successful for me because I would say I do charge by the unit. Um, I have not had an issue with that being a problem. And when I'm doing anywhere from, you know, 150 to 200 units of Dysport or, um, you know, I would say 80 to 100 units of Botox on my average patient, uh, I feel like 
um, I just never know the range that I'm going to do. And I don't, um, and then a man is going to take a higher dose. So for me, for my practice, I know a lot of people do by area, but for me, it works better to do by the unit. And you don't have patients. So at that point, do you put together a plan and you say, and it's going to be $1,400, or do you say it's going to be 80 units or? Um, I usually tell them for, you know, upper face is usually about $650 and lower face is going to be an extra uh, three to $400, depending on how much product we use. So that's a, you know, that's kind of an average of what I tell them. And they say, okay, well, my budget's, you know, $800, in which case I might not do you know, quite as high of a dose on the neck bands. So I'll try to make it work for them based on their budget of how many units, you know, to use. But right. uh, I give them a recommendation of what I think they're going to need to get the best results. Well, and then how about from filler? Because once budget comes into play with filler, are you going to do two, two, two vials instead of four or how do, how do you manage that, right? Like, you know, they need four to six. I mean, you have an 80 year old woman that whatever it yeah. is. Well, again, I start small. I'm playing the long game. So I am going to do as really small amounts on them that first visit, because I really want to get to know what their expectations are. If, you know, if there's somebody that I'm going to want to look, you know, work for long term, and um, I'm going to see, you know, if they're happy with my work and if they want to do more, because my goal is for them to have an amazing experience and feel good, not to come in and spend $4,000 and then never see me again. So, you know, I'll tell them, you know, fillers start at about $750 a syringe. And, you know, I'm planning, I think, to do this couple of the small lines around your mouth. It's going to take two syringes of filler. Are you comfortable with that? And, but our paperwork, our pre-paperwork is very clear on cost. So they are told ahead of time in our paperwork and even our consents, some of the, they get um, some, some consents ahead of time to review the bottom of the consents. It says, you know, upper face toxin starts at about $650, fillers start at $750 per syringe, and they sign that. So before they even come into the office, they have a pretty good idea of the range of cost for the products. And I think that that saves me that nickel and dime conversation during the, the consultation. And you mentioned your website too. Do you have ballpark pricing on your yeah, website? Yeah, I have kind of like starting at pricing. Um, and you feel you like know, it's it it's vetting, it vets people? I think so. Yes. I think it vets people. Um, because, you know, I, I think, um, and part of marketing is really being clear on who your desired patient, um, you know, who your, who your ideal patient is. And do you want somebody coming in and being the kind of nickel and diming you, or do you want somebody coming in and being realistic that this is going to be, you know, a $1,500 to $2,500 uh, procedure to have toxin and filler or just toxin so that they're not, you know, um, blindsided by, by the cost. And, and that's what served, served me well is just honest, you know, being super honest, super authentic from, from the get-go but also um, really being clear on your ideal patient and what kind of patient you want in your practice. And um, I have people that come in and all we do is BBL on them. And, you know, we charge anywhere from 450 to 550 for a broadband light, Cyton uh, broadband light. And that's all they do with us. So, you know, we can fit uh, procedures into their budget based on uh, what they want to achieve. Thank you so much for sharing I, that. It's a great topic and your approach. I can see why uh, you, you've you set patients up to want to have a long-term relationship. They're, you're slowly educating and they're slowly asking for more. You're presenting pictures and they're looking at themselves in a different light, you know, knowing that there's some new solutions out there. And I, I love that approach. I can, and I can talk to you all day on it. I want to, uh, 
I think I want... it's called the soft, soft sell. Soft sell. <laughs> I think, you know, and one thing that resonated to me, I didn't say it at the time, but I will now is uh, when I speak with women providers that are successful, the first thing they talk to me about is listening. It's like over and over. I have, you know, these su successful and I don't. And when I speak with men, not to say men don't listen, but it does not come up first the way that it does when I speak with women providers. So it's whatever men from Mars, women from Venus uh, subject for another time. But I, I uh, it, for all the men out there, there <laughs> it's a, uh, there's something to be said that many, many successful women start with. I listen to what my patient has to say. Well, I didn't come up with it, but I have to say, and it's a man that I learned this from. So another mentor, uh, Dr. Stephen Diane, I don't know if you know, um, if you've heard of him, but he um, has written books and he does a wonderful lecture on listening. And he, I think it was like 10 years ago, I heard him lecture and he said, you've got to listen to your patient and what they are asking for. This isn't about you. This is about them and really trying to figure out what they're trying to say to you that they want. And you, you really, you really do have to put those listening ears and hear what they're, what they're trying to, to ask you for and say, um, and a lot of it is nonverbal. So it's like emotional intelligence, but you can learn it. Yeah, and Dr. Diana, another great contributor to our community. Uh, I love watching his world travels on uh, his own social media, you know, tra literally traveling around the world. And he is such a terrific writer in addition to, to being such a great speaker. Uh, he, but I have not heard that. So I'm going to look for I'm going to yeah, look for that. Yeah. No, he's Do got you, a great... He's got so... I want to uh, ask, and I was trying to, uh, are we getting to wrap us up, but I want to just take a few minutes because I want to talk to you about your use of social media. So good transition from Dr. Diane, but uh, perfect. you're using social media on a, on a really a personal scale and you've had success with it. I wanted to let you share that because I think it's a great tip. And I also think there's a lot of practices. I, I see them. Um, trying to do what uh, Dr. Jason Emmer has done or Dr. Chilla Curry maybe or, um, you know, uh, Dr. Stevens in, in Marina Del Rey, right? These huge, really visible, high-profile um, practices and doing TikToks and dances and all these things. And I don't think anyone sees it. And I don't think that they realize that anyone sees it. And maybe to their own patient, it looks sillier in a, in a lot of ways you've taken this uh, what i think is for 99 percent of the people that listen to business of aesthetics a, a really tactical approach to social media so i want to i want to give it a few minutes okay so when i first got it you know opened the practice i realized that and this was in 2017 i was realized that we needed to be on um um, so, uh, Instagram was the big when I was like, Oh my goodness, you know, I wasn't even on Instagram. So I really thought about it. And I, I was like, who do I want to follow? Cause I saw all these people with all these followers, thousands and thousands of followers. And I think I had like 500 and I was like, okay, who do I want to follow me? I said, I looked at their followers and I said, they're all from different places. They're from California. They're from Wisconsin. They're, I said, I want people to follow me who can actually come and see me and pay money to be in my chair. So the, that is my audience. And I decided I wanted every single person who would come into the office to hopefully follow me, or I wanted to ask them to follow me because that's really who I want. I want my patients to be my audience. So for six months, we ran a little special where if at checkout, they would, uh, we had a little, well, now we have a QR code, but if they pull up their phone, follow us, like a post and comment with a heart, it can be anything, they'll get $10 off their visit. So we did do a little discount uh, for that. And 
we ran it for about six months to try to get everybody through. And it was very successful. And then when patients would come back and see me, they would be like, oh my goodness, I saw you with your dog. Or, you know, I saw you talking about lip flips. Am I a candidate for lip flips? So it gave me a direct communication that was on a personal level to patients that were already in my chair. And then you can, if you want to do um, a boost on some of these posts, you can boost it to, you know, friends of friends, which typically are also local. And those are the people that you really want to double down on are, are your people that already love you. And you, typically patients that are in your chair, they already love you. And you can I use it really as a direct communication to them of what other products am I bringing on? Um, what am I doing? You know, educating them about my trainings, educating them about um, all kinds of things. And I think of it as almost a direct line of communication that's a little bit more personal than uh, my newsletter. How often do you post? I try, I mean, I try to post at least two or three times a week or more, but um, when I get busy, it's, you know, it's me and one of my front desk helps me. So we're, we haven't hired out yet. And so, someday maybe I'll hire it out. Cause it's a lot of work, but it, it, for, you know, we don't have a ton of followers, but it's been, it's been successful and the patients love it. Like my, and they tend to not unfollow you cause they're real people right. and they know you. Well, and also you're not fatiguing them. So this is the other piece that I, I love hearing you say two or three times a week. That's realistic. That's something that a practice your size or a practice the size of my practice can 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 do. Uh, inter, you know, when I speak with who know who who can imagine how big uh, Jason Emmer's team is, but when I speak with physicians, you know, plastic surgeons just competing in Newport Beach, California, or LA, or whatever they'll have a social media team of at least three people, at least because someone's full-time editing sometimes. The, so the idea that 99% of us are not going to go hire three people. And if you're not going to go th hire three people, don't try to be in the 1%. Um, I think your patients listen to you and love what you're doing because you're posting relevant things, things that you think are important two or three times. It's not so intrusive into my feeds that I'm seeing it all the time. So I just thank you so much for sharing the um, approach. And even for me personally, I've been trying to think, who, how can I hire out? How can I build up our social media? It, it, you made me rethink it to think, how do I get all the patients that have come to see us over all the years to engage in our social media? That's more valuable to me. I don't need to be Instagram famous in Texas. It does no, you know, I, it, that being Instagram famous out of my greater metropolitan area doesn't generate any dollars. Right. The, well, one thing that we did, because I have two Instagrams, I have Deluxe Med Spa and I have Naples Beauty Injector, which is my personal, that has really become my business. And now that I have other injectors, I'm trying to build up deluxe med spa. So we, what we did recently to get people to transition over to deluxe med spa, we did a giveaway and you could do this with your practice because you have a large email list. I sent out a newsletter and on the newsletter, I did um, a giveaway with my new provider for a BBL treatment. So to enter, they would need to follow and, you know, like a post on the deluxe site. Um, to be entered into this free treatment, but it went out to my email list and on the email, it had a direct link to the Instagram so that my entire email database would hopefully sign up to like, not just Naples beauty injector, but also deluxe med spa. And I'm sure you have um, newsletter capability with your email list and you could put, you know, a give anything, even, even if it's not a giveaway, just a skincare product, anything just to, to follow your page. And that's, those are your patients. So here's your audience. And then you have a direct communication with them. And then you use it just like you serve the business of aesthetics community. You serve your patients with, um, with relevant information. Dana, another, I mean, right. What a Little great Pearl. The little pearl. No, it's it's. I mean, you get this community, and you get 
why this works and <clears throat> we appreciate you so much. I think uh, if you were lucky enough to listen to this podcast, you really, I, I want to go back through and write down a, a few little notes just as reminders or things that we can be working on in, in our own practice or make some tweaks, but uh, really valuable information. Dana, we appreciate it. I want to give you, I can't imagine there's not a ton of people that want to talk to you or ask questions. I know you're on the Facebook group, so someone can type in Dana Zeitler if they're part of the Facebook group, group and, and find you there. I'm not sure if you're on LinkedIn or, or not with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm on, I'm on all the, all the social media channels. I'm not very big on LinkedIn or, you know, I don't have a whole lot on there. I, at YouTube, but generally, um, Na my Naples beauty injector, uh, site on my Instagram, I, you know, it's me in the DMS, or you can certainly find me, um, on the website, deluxemedspa.com and just click the link and email me. Um, what's your, what's your Instagram handle? Uh, Naples beauty injector. Naples Beauty Injector. We will put that in the notes on this. Um, share this podcast with your friends. Go give us reviews, but share this podcast with your friends. Really, uh, if you love someone, give them this valuable information. That I, I um, hope, I hope it really it. helped. <laughs> Terrific. Uh, on behalf of the Business of Aesthetics Community, our uh, sponsors, uh, MRP uh, has been supporting our community. MRP.io. Uh, the uh, Tony Ty Black and the great folks at Ilees Works. If you want to finance uh, equipment, and um, and Sarah Schickman at uh, Lengia Law, uh, Lengia Law .com, all big supporters of sharing information like this transparently, helping each other uh, grow and get better. Thank you all for joining us. Another terrific episode. We will list this out. Uh, go to businessofaesthetics.org if you want to find this uh, episode again. Thank you for joining us this week on the Business of Aesthetics podcast series. Brought to you by our gold sponsors, MRP, Laser Optech, and Equa Marketing. And silver sponsors, Lendia Law, Eilis Works, and Pronox. Would you like to join our growing group of aesthetic industry experts and get featured on the Business of Aesthetics podcast? Or do you know someone who would love to share their strategies for growth in the aesthetics business, providing quality patient care or their clinical expertise? Head on over to www.businessofaesthetics.org forward slash podcast stash show and apply to be featured as a guest on the show remember to subscribe to this podcast on itunes google play amazon music or wherever you listen if you would like to engage with today's or any of our past speakers join our facebook group or linkedin group by searching for business of aesthetics thank you and have a great day